Hey Megan, are you a fan of the high waisted legging suit like I am? I oh, give me a high waisted legging any day. You got four more. Four. Three. Two and one. Shake it off. Oh yeah, I love like give me something over my belly button and I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> All right, short and sweet. So let's just get into this left side, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Are we liking the jams? I'm loving your jams. Okay, good. Phew. <laughs> okay, you're on that right elbow this time, and you're crossing your ankle so your knees are up to the side, and we're lifting and lowering. So lift up. And down, good. And think about getting that knee behind your head. Yes, down and up. Squeeze. It's down. It's up. Just taking you back. I don't know if anyone knows this, but Marie like started the online fitness trend. You, you had like you had <laughs> barely, but I used to teach a lot of hip hop. I and love it. Obviously, I still dance a lot of hip hop. That's yeah. what I used to. And all my folks are like, can we please do a dance class? I and know. These delays. Have you been doing the dancing on lives with delays? Does it matter? Oh, it's so frustrating. I don't know. Is what, it? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I don't, I think frustrating because, you know, there is yeah. a delay and I want people to be able to, uh, yeah. to work out with me. Yeah. And to be on, yeah, totally. Two kicks and a tap. Yeah, I think with dance, it's like, it, because it is so B-based, you really yeah. want that to be on. It's two kicks. Beautiful. Lean into that left arm. Yes. It's a kick. Kick. So at and home, the intention of coming so far forward with that little tap in the front, right yes. by your arm. Yes. I know, exactly. It's something that most people don't want to go as far forward, but if you can, you're going to feel a little bit more intensity. It makes you feel like for a second, for a second, you <laughs> do these kind of moves. Because when I'm doing hip hop, that just don't happen. Like, I'm like, oh. Yeah, but Mary, you can you can freaking dance down and up. Okay, it's down and up. Good. Have you? Have it only ever been hip hop? Mostly. Like when yeah. I was dancing with Nike, we would do some Latin. We also yeah. had some Afro-Cuban and some house and stuff like that. Ooh. But I've never tried anything that was more modern. Yeah. And I want to. Yeah. I grew up doing mostly ballet and jazz. And then uh, professionally, I was with the Brooklynette, so hip hop. Yes. Yes. And that was like my fake it till I make it audition. Where <laughs> I was like, I swear I'm a hip hop dancer. Hold it at the top and pulse it up. Pulse it up. Good. So at home, really see that, but we got eight. Seven, nice. Checking with that core, nice and tight. We got four, three. We're gonna go into that two kick and a tap side. So kick it out and tap it front. Beautiful. Kick, kick. Yeah. Last round, guys. Kick it out. God, it's a squeeze. So good, Megan. Oh, I just realized we forgot to lift and tap side, so we're going to have to double up on the plug. Nice. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It's a kick. It's the morning. It's the morning. <laughs> what do we want? We're moving our bodies. Yeah, they're making me guess. That's right. <laughs> Last one, we're going to hold it side, and then we're going to lift it up and down. Here we go. Big breath. We got 16 reps here. It's up. And tap. Think about leaning into that left arm. Find your core. Yes. Home stretch. So do you typically wake up and work out first thing always, or does it change up? So I'm a wake up and create kind of girl. Yeah. Um, and I also go, I'm like different in different seasons. So if I'm working on a book or a program, I have to wake up and write first because I feel like my brain is really on fire. Yeah. And then sometimes I need to wake up and work out. So I just can't yeah. follow my flow. Yes, I love that. Last one. Take a second. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're even. <laughs> okay, guys. Final, final one. So let's get into this twisted child pose. Knees are center. Upper body's twisted. Booty goes back. And we're kicking that leg on that back left corner. So open. Yes, Marie, there it is. Booty down. And kick a little bit faster. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Kick. Yes. Love this. Yeah, it should feel like a nice little stretch in your back at home. Booty goes all the way to your heels. 
Hey, two more. Hey, Megan, I'll ask you offline too. Yeah, I'm hold it. you're around this Saturday. Yeah. What so are you, you doing do Saturday? Self care Saturday with my people. So oh yeah, here. let's do it. At home, you can always put an elbow. So kicking low and high, it's up, it's down. There it is. Have you guys been doing that as a team? I've just been every week doing something different. Sometimes I'm leading a super basic ass workout, but it still gets us moving. Yeah. Sometimes doing story time. Hold sometimes it. doing like just weird fun stuff, but anything that can get people feeling good and taking care of themselves. I love that. Booty goes back. It's back. Kick. So this is our final round from the top. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think workouts need to be overcomplicated during this time. I think people just need to feel good, right? If that means like That's five right. minutes. Keep of, ourselves like, strong. Out. Yeah. Keep our heads clear. Yes. Two more. Good. Last one. We're going to hold at the top. Pick it high and low. High. Low. Find your core here, guys, at home. Elbow optional. Oh, we should be feeling it. Kick yes. it in the and forth. Good. Two more sets here. It's two. It's one. We're going to pulse it out. Pulse it up. Squeeze. Squeeze. A little more weight in that left arm at home. Home stretch. We got eight. Seven. Yes, we're done. In four. In three. Two. And one. There it is. Take it off. <laughs> we did Love it. it. We did it. We did it, guys. Short and sweet. Let me turn this off. Okay, I feel so much better. Um, this is so great. I'm so sweaty, nice. and I love starting my day with you, and I love starting my day with all you guys. Hi, everyone. Yay. So I just want to – I've got 15 minutes with you, and I feel like you're just such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to everything, life, business, all that. And I think right now a lot of us um, who have businesses, who have – who are entrepreneurs are kind of, like, stuck in this where do we go in this moment, right? Yes. Um, I, I was, I did B school with you right when I launched my company. Um, it was really a game changer. So I think first of all, if you have not checked out Marie's B school and you are starting a company, or even if you're in the midst of your company and you want to refresh, I think B school is, um, just such a great tool to yes. connect with what, you know, your business and who your customer is and, and all and of Megan, that. Have you done, um, have you done copy cure? I'm going to get you in the program. Oh, well, I was, look I was, of course, looking at your Instagram last night, and I was like, oh, I could really work on my copy. You, um, so this is for, because it's available now, and I'll share this with everyone. We're doing, we're going to have scholarships. We have a free writing class coming up. And Megan, I want you to have, I want everyone to have the ability to communicate your message in the most powerful way possible and in a way that is true to your brand and your voice. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for anyone who's a creative, whether you're a writer um, you're a business owner. You're just someone who cares about the world and you want to be able to write emails or social posts or whatever in the most powerful way. Go check out thecopycure.com. Again, we'll have a free writing class. You can take advantage of that. We're going to do scholarships, but um, the program is awesome. So Megan, we'll get you in there, of course. I'll also do like a swipe up after this for people yeah. who want to just get that immediate website. Um, yeah, I agree. I think copy is so strong. And honestly, writing doesn't come super naturally to me. I think I'm, I'm better in like content creation and, and other things where I know I could probably work a little bit more on my copy. For most of us too. I mean, writing, it's a little bit like singing. I think singing for me is one of the most vulnerable things. I am not a good singer, but I'm taking singing lessons and writing is a similar way. Like we have so much to say in our minds and in our hearts. And sometimes between our minds and hearts and the page, things get jumbled up and you're like, Oh, does this sound professional? Or is this how I really want to be communicating with the world. So I think, um, again, I think copy is awesome. But generally speaking, for entrepreneurs right now, you know, I think it's such an incredible opportunity to dig deep and be more creative and take more risks and try things if possible. Like, I love that you're doing this. Have you, have you been doing lives a lot? Is this more of a continuation or is this like, you know what, this is a new layer to what I'm sharing? It's a new layer. I've been doing lives, but I've, you know, there's been a big part of me that I haven't showcased on, on my, my personal Instagram. And that is, is all of this, all of this behind the scenes work that I've done with you with B-School or, or meditating. And I, I want to bring all of those thought leaders and show, show my community that um, there are other layers 
to to my business and to life and how we can build upon those skills. And so, yeah, just like you said, I'm sort of taking not that they're risks, but just taking a, you know, I'm playing around a little bit with the content that I'm making and putting out there and sort of seeing what people respond to. Yeah. And I think also too, for many of us who strive to do things right and we want to get it perfect Mm -hmm. and we want it to be all kind of shaped and have a bow on top before we share it with the world. The other opportunity of this time is to just let perfectionism go, right. And to just absolutely experiment and to be even more connected with people in a way that perhaps you didn't have permission to do before. And so, um, you know, talking about B-School for a minute, I've seen so many people in that program, thousands of people just do the most incredible things. Like for example, there was a a woman who writes children's books and she was nervous because um, obviously when everything was changing, she was like, my goodness, I don't know if I'm gonna get another um, publishing contract, what am I gonna do? And through B-School, one of the things we talk about, which you know, is really understanding your ideal customer. Who is that human being? What are their dreams and aspirations and fears and frustrations? And how can you serve them from your heart? So she took a step back and she said, you know what? My ideal customers are moms. And right now moms, they're having a really challenging time. They don't have childcare. They're still working their full-time jobs. Like, you know, just the world has gotten turned upside down. So she said, I don't think they want a new children's book from me. You know what they want? They want 10 minutes alone. So Mm. she actually, she'd never done this before. She took one of her children's books. um, She wrote a new story. She basically read it online and had people opt in to get this new story time thing. She built her email list by 10,000 people overnight. She got so many letters from moms thanking her. She said, they said, this was the first time in like weeks that I had 15 minutes to myself. And so she said, I would have never thought of that if I wasn't in this program and really got into the head and heart space of my ideal clients. So there were so many people that are just kind of digging down deep into their own hearts and looking at new and fresh ways to serve their community, just like what you're doing. You're saying, whoa, there's all these layers to what makes me me and to what brings me power as a woman, meditation, you know, all these different wellness exercises. And why don't I bring this together to my community? So it's not just seeing me in the studio. It's not just seeing me do what they know me to do, but kind of broadening this out. So I think um, every business owner can look through that lens and find new opportunities for expansion and connection. Yeah, I love that. I have some questions that people wrote in about that I just want to make sure I get to. Um, What do you think... um, the best way to promote a small business besides social media is? Great question. So there are many different opportunities. It depends on your budget, right? So if you don't want to be on social as you, or you're just like, gosh, I do a paid spend and that doesn't necessarily mean a ton of money. Marie, can you go back? Sorry, you just froze. Oh yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Absolutely. So um, you can do paid if you wanted to buy like very small, you know, five, $10 ads to drive traffic. You can also develop relationships with other people who reach your core audience. So if you know who your target audience is, think about who are parallel folks, folks that you can consider colleagues that maybe you can create some value for them and they can share it with their audience on your behalf. You have to really think in terms of win-win. I'm a huge advocate. I've been for 20 years of telling people to develop their email lists, right? Their you taught me that. I, that was the first thing on B-School I did, and it was the smartest thing I've ever done. It's like people still underestimate it. They think everything is social, and it's not. You never want to build your business on someone else's platform that you don't own. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, social is amazing for kind of top of funnel and for connecting with people. But if you don't want to be on it, you don't have to. So email is another great way. You can create free content and have it on a blog, on YouTube, on so many different platforms where, again, you don't have to necessarily be sharing everything about your personal life, but it can be of service to an ideal customer, and then you drive them back on the list. So there's many, many different ways to do it. Those are just a few. I love that. Yeah. And I think, you know, you always sort of honed in on really creating value. How can you create something of value and in exchange, they're giving your email. Um, okay. Let's see here. Someone says, what quarantine habit will you keep when COVID goes away? This is a great one. Um, You know what? It is more of a mental and emotional habit, Megan. For me, 
I realized how much pressure I put on myself to try and be everywhere, meaning like, you know, saying yes to whatever kind of event. And I'm pretty good at saying no, like I'm pretty good at it. And I realized, whoa, I have a whole other level to get to. So the mental habit for me is releasing myself from the emotional and mental pressure of of trying to do everything or be everywhere. I've actually really enjoyed being home and I've also really enjoyed not having FOMO, not having like, oh, could I have got, it's like, no, I'm just here and I'm so much more present and I'm so much more just at peace in my heart. And so that is a feeling and an emotional state that I really wanna retain um, once things move on to a, to a new and hopefully better world. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like as a business owner, I, I, there just never sort of that that need to continue and push. And I'm struggling with that too. And I think for the first time, I'm I'm actually realizing, wow, I can slow down and things will still come in and flow will still happen. I also think too, another great business habit, it's like, I just think about this, how many times I got notes from my friends like, oh, you and Megan should connect. Oh my God, you guys should do a class. And for whatever reason, right, you and I were even connecting. It's like, oh, I'm not at the same, we're not at the same place. Like, look, we're like hanging out right here. We're on different coasts. And it's, it's so cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, can we talk a little bit about your book? Everything yes! is figure out about? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about your amazing book. So what are some tools people can find in there? I mean, obviously the title, I think, kind of says it all, right? Yes. So if anyone watching or listening right now, if you want um, an inspiring, practical, actionable guide uh, to being the creative force in your own life, everything is figure outable. There's a great chapter about fear, the F word I think all of us need to embrace. For me, fear, again, outside of keeping us away from standing in front of a moving bus or a train, our fear is really directive. It's a GPS for where our soul most wants us to go. So it's a complete reframe on our experience of fear with really practical exercises to help you understand the difference between fear and intuition. Meaning like if your intuition is saying, no, I don't think you should do that. How do you distinguish between healthy fear you need to move through and that still inner voice that's trying to really keep you on the best path for you. So we dive into that. Um, dream clarification. I think one of the most challenging things for all of us, especially multi-passionate entrepreneurs, which I, um, that's who I am. I like a lot of different things. How do you clarify who you are, what you want and have that direction? Because clarity really e equals confidence without shaving off different parts of who you are or your dreams. So there's a chapter in there about define your dream that I think is really, really, really awesome for helping people unearth what they really want, focus on it without feeling like you're cutting off your edges. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, one of my favorite chapters about living an excuse-free life. Excuses can hold all of us back from time to time. We all make excuses that doesn't make us bad. It makes us human. But if you have a dream in your heart, that you really want to see come to life. In my experience, it is critical that you adopt an excuse-free life. And so we walk you through exactly how to do that so that you're honest between you and you, and you don't use excuses like, I don't have the time, or I don't have the money, or I don't have the resources, or any of that stuff. Again, that can rise up for all of us. It's yeah. a way to clear all of that out and just get laser focused on, on what you want and the reality of bringing it to life. Yeah, and I think even just like your title, like you can, a lot of what you said in, in B school, like Google it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I, I literally Googled like how to film a workout video in your apartment. Like, you know, you just figure it out, you know? Yes. It kind of, the book for me, it is not about me or my wisdom. It is about awakening that innate knowing and the power that each of us have inside that is inborn. We have it. And uh, after 20 years of working with people and the ability that I see in them, once they start to kind of clear away all of those notions about, well, I don't know, and can I, and I don't know, they become just super powered. And so for me, this book is, it's almost like a can opener, you know, it mm -hmm. opens the can of the power of you. So it's not mm -hmm. about me, it's about you. And um, it is, everything really is figure outable. And there's a set of rules in there that everyone's like, no, everything's not figure out. <laughs> we handle that. Um, but the one recommendation I would say is if you do get the book, um, do the book, just don't read the book. You'll know exactly what I mean by that when you get into it. 
we have insight to action challenges where that's where the book comes to life for you. And that's how you make yourself unstoppable. I love that. Okay. I have like two minutes left with you. Yeah. Um, you know, what is, what is a mistake you see over and over again with, with, um, you know, small businesses or, on, or any business really, yeah. what are, what are mistakes that you just always see? One of the biggest things I've seen this in myself too, and it's a constant practice, right? So I'm always watching out for this in me is taking on too much at once, mm. trying to do too many things at the same time and not being really good or feeling really satisfied or completing any of them. So when your bandwidth is spread too thin, not only do you feel like you're always losing, if you're mm. probably comparing yourself to other people and going like, why can't I lose it? It's because you're not focused. It's you have too many things on your plate. So a uh, directive I would love to share with people is simplify to amplify. Mm. If you want to get further, faster, and feel more, more joyful, feel more satisfied, see everything kind of accelerate in a good way, not in a rushed or stressed way, but actually see progress in a meaningful direction, simplify to amplify. I remember, Megan, years ago, I had so many different programs. I was doing high-level mentorship. I was doing an animal conference. I had all these different things. And um, I actually slashed over a million dollars in revenue because oh, wow. I was being spread too thin. And yeah. when I simplified the entire business, I mean, I think 30 X the revenue and the profit from actually pruning back. It's a pruning. Do you, if you know gardening terms, mm -hmm. pruning is one of the most powerful things you can do. If you want a plant to grow really strong and really full and really robust, you actually cut it back strategically. So simplify to amplify is something that people should remember because the big mistake is trying to do too much at once. I love that. I love that. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, one more question. And I loved it because I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people feel this way, which is, and I can't find the question exactly, but, um, oh, how do you build the confidence to enter a saturated market or field? And I know you've answered this question in B-School. How do you feel, not feel redundant? Yeah. Okay. So this is a great point. Um, First of all, one of the things I always say on my show, the world needs that very special gift that only you have. We have to focus on the facts. There are over seven and a half billion people on the planet. There is more than enough to go around. So there are more than enough clients, more than enough customers, more than enough opportunity. There's not scarcity. Scarcity is one of the most dangerous myths in the planet, right? It's one of the most destructive personally and collectively. And so to remember that, first of all, in any market, and I'll say this, like in my market, in the, in coaching and life coaching and business coaching, and even as an author, let's do that, right? Mm -hmm. People aren't like, I'm only going to buy Marie Forleo's book and not anyone else's, or I'm only going to buy X's book and not Marie Forleo's. Oh, hell no. I buy all the books in a yeah. certain topic, yeah. workouts, right? Yeah. It's like you have your people who are absolute Megan fans, but that doesn't mean they're not occasionally gonna go take another class and they're not totally. disloyal to you. They're like, I wanna enjoy all the fitness. And so it's like, we have to stop thinking that there's not enough to go around and that if someone else is succeeding, that it means that we're not. It's actually usually a good indicator that there's a great, hungry, thriving market for you to step into. And if, a certain message or a certain product or service hasn't been delivered by you. It hasn't all been done before. That's actually another section in the book. We talk about this in a really beautiful way. And I would just encourage everyone, you know, there's more than enough room to go around. There is no scarcity when it comes to success. And the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. You're a one-time mega met in the universe. You've yeah. never been here and as far as we know, you will never be here again. So this is the time. Oh, what amazing place to end. Because I think a lot of people need to hear that, you know. Yeah. Um, we need another coffee shop on the corner by you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just think um, that that's just such a, a really powerful message. And I hope that people can take that away um, for themselves. But thank you, Marie. Thank you for your time. This was thank so you. special. Um, I'll DM you. Yes. yes, this was wonderful. Thank you for getting my day started. Sure. Thanks to everyone for joining us. This is fantastic. And I can't wait to get into your app because again, everyone has been singing your praises for so long. And I'm so thrilled that we finally had a chance to hang out like this. Thank you so much, Marie. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye.